My name's Ken Whiting. I'm a world champion whitewater paddler and I've led trips and taught kayaking around the world. As an athlete and explorer, my lifelong passion has been to challenge myself, meet interesting new people, discover beautiful places, and share these experiences with others. This is the story of these adventures. This is Paddle Tales. Hey everyone, I'm Ken Whiting, and this is the fourth episode of Paddle Tales, a series that explores some of the most amazing places in the world while going on cool paddling adventures along the way. Now in this episode, we're gonna to go to one of the most incredible places that I've ever been to. But before we get into it, please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, so that you get notified when the next episode comes out. So where are we going in this episode? we're heading north to one of the most overlooked regions of Quebec, a seemingly boundless area that's known for its rugged beauty and the diversity of its wildlife. It's a region that features 800 miles of coastline, thousands of islands, and countless pristine rivers. In this episode of Paddle Tales, we're exploring Quebec's wild and wonderful Cotonou. The Cotonou region is located in eastern Quebec, stretching along the St. Lawrence waterway from Tadoussac to Blanc-Sablon at the Labrador border. The area has countless natural treasures to discover, which is why it's considered by many to be the unpolished jewel of the province. I'm meeting up with Jean-Francois of Noriac, an accomplished whitewater paddler and sea kayaker who has spent almost two decades exploring and guiding in the area. Our adventure begins on Quarry Island in Mangan National Park. We get up early and make the short hike across the island so that I can get my first look at the icons that attract adventure travelers from around the world. The stunning limestone monoliths. That's pretty cool. It's incredible, eh? I love the feel of a foggy morning. I mean, the feel of the fog in these monoliths is so cool. Yeah, it's incredible because, you know, it's like kind of sedimentary rock. So, you know, the rock is all sculpted uh, by the, the wind and the wave, the yeah. tide going on. Yeah, you can see layers. There's a, definitely a story there of time. They really are like pieces of art. Yeah, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sculptor came out here and said, ah, oh, let's uh -huh. do this. And, and I guess they are in a way, they're natural art. Walking around the monoliths really feels like you're on another planet. It really is amazing to think that Mother Nature has spent thousands of years sculpting these beautiful shapes with her erosive chisel. And the fact that she chose to carve a tribute to Barney the dinosaur is particularly impressive. This rock really is beautiful. It's like these little pieces of Lego that have been put together. It's actually quite fragile and you can, you can tell how this is going to be carved pretty quickly by the elements. From the monolith gardens, we head to Ilo Perroquet, or Parrot Island a tiny islet with a storied history that serves as a gateway to the western end of the Mangan Archipelago. We climb up its recently restored lighthouse to get a unique vantage point of the rare and beautiful marine environment that surrounds us. You know, lighthouses are awesome structures, but they're even better when you're on top of them. And now that the fog is starting to lift, we've got a great view of the whole area. You can see the sea floor, the waves coming in, the birds everywhere. I think it's time to get in a kayak now. I can hardly wait to get out on the water and experience the Mangan Archipelago more closely. So I quickly assemble my track kayak, while above, 
a splendid audience of local wildlife observes my every move. I'll tell you what, Jeff, I wasn't expecting to do any surfing. I was expecting to see some birds here, yep. but there's definitely some nice little waves. What do you say we go uh, catch some waves? Yeah, why not? <laughs> I like it. Yep. We got a little puffin, yeah, buddy. Yeah, it's just there, incredible. <laughs> That's the coolest thing about this island, is there are birds just everywhere. <laughs> and not just birds. No. Birds you don't really find many places in the world. Puffins. One of the coolest looking birds I think I've seen. I found they look like a clown a bit. And when they fly, it's special because uh, they work hard, you know? Yeah. And I love how they drop off the cliff, get speed, and then just cruise the surface. They're like little fighter jets. <laughs> so you often come out to these islands with Noriak taking clients out here. Yeah. Noriak Avancer is uh, in base in the Megani region. Yeah. And we do some uh, kayak tours. So uh, a classic one is to go to a perroquet. But this one, you, you got to be a strong paddler or in good shape to do it. Because we're about, what, three miles from mainland? Yeah, in kilometers about four to five. We have to manage that kayak guide, uh, know how to deal with that. So yeah, we take care of people and give them a good paddling uh, trip. With so many islands and channels and the river to play with, you can almost always find somewhere to paddle, whether you're paddling for yourself or taking clients or it's, there's something. Yeah, there's plenty of uh, possibility around here. Look at those uh, monolites. Question is, how cool does it look close up? I think we have to find out. When it comes to sea kayaking, I've always loved paddling exposed coastlines with rough water and surf. And there's nothing I enjoy more than picking my way through a rock garden or a maze of mangroves. But now I can add a new favorite activity to my list, monolith paddling pretty awesome to weave your way through the carved limestone towers, through shallow and narrow channels, exploring and getting into places that would be virtually impossible to reach in any other way. In keeping with the day's formula of new discovery, JF shares a delicacy of the Cotonard region with me, fresh sea urchin, which he just plucked from the water below us. Want to taste it? I don't know. <laughs> do, do I want to taste it? Come on. Yeah. Let's go. After you. I, I did. I just <laughs> did before. <laughs> Pretty good. Salty. Eh? Salty. Definitely salty. Huh. I'll try a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> Our first day in Mangal National Park was everything I'd hoped for, which is saying a lot because I had extremely high expectations. There's just something about the North that has always captivated me, and this area is another perfect example of the magic that's waiting to be discovered. Oh, look at this. Whoa! Of course, there's lots of different ways to experience the magic, which is why I'm excited to grab a paddleboard with Jane Anne Cormier of Les Vagues. Together, we'll explore one of the many rivers that drops into the Gulf of the St. Lawrence. So you grew up here. I did. But you didn't actually really start exploring the rivers and the coast until you left yeah. and then came back. Exactly. <laughs> I guess you need some time to change scenery to realize 
what you what's got. there. Yeah. yeah. I've always loved being in nature, but like never had like water sports equipment or whatever. Or yeah. so it's it's really a new way to discover this area that I've grown up with, known my entire life, but didn't really know that way. <laughs> so what does Levag do? Um, right now it's um, a stand-up paddleboard school, I guess I could call it. <laughs> uh, so we're giving uh, introduction classes. Uh, it's possible to also rent the material, to rent the boards, rent the wetsuits, to go on the water by yourself once you've experimented enough. And I also offer a guided excursion. <laughs> I'll tell you what, this is one of the spots that I've been wanting to visit for a long time. Yeah. And it is, it's very much what I hoped it would be. It's a mix of the north with you know, the beautiful forest line, but at the same time, rugged coastline. I mean, it's rugged wilderness here. Oh yeah, it is, and, it is. I mean, that's what's so cool about having the park here, yeah. is that it just, boom, it makes it very accessible. And it's funny because that's a comment that I get a lot in the city. Like, well, there must not be that much to do over there. <laughs> well, what? depends on what kind of things you like to do because no, there's no movie theater and there's yeah. no malls and there's no things like that. But it's a little bit more of an adventure place yeah. to go. Yeah, that's exactly it. It's, that's what's so attractive to me. As we paddle down the coast, it's pretty obvious why Jane Ann would return to the Côte Nord after 10 years living in Montreal. Being here is an undeniable part of living the dream. With the arrival of our final day, I struggle with the idea of having to leave. The rugged beauty of the region is spellbinding, but as a fresh group of travelers prepare for their own paddling adventure, I start getting excited myself, because today, Jean-Francois and I are taking our sea kayaks to the rapids that are found only a few hundred yards from the Noriac base, where the Romaine River drops into the St. Lawrence. I really can't think of a better way to end my trip to Quebec's Côte Nord than with a good old fashioned play session. After all, the area is without a doubt one of the world's most incredible outdoor playgrounds. And I like to think of kayaks as being nothing more than toys for big kids to take advantage of the natural world. But as with any great trip, the end always comes too soon. I'm sad to leave, but incredibly thankful for the experience I've had in this wild and wonderful region known as the Côte Nord. Well, that does it for this episode of Paddle Tales. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already and leave any questions or comments that you have in the comments section below and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Otherwise, stay tuned for a sneak peek of the next adventure on Paddle Tales.
Next time on Paddle Tales, I'm heading to Les Îles de la Madeleine, a breathtaking chain of islands located far from anywhere else in the Gulf of the St. Lawrence. We'll explore the stunning coastline by sea kayak, discover the unique pleasures of island living, and swim our way into some of the Earth's most incredible cracks and crevices. These Îles de la Madeleine are unlike anything you've ever seen, and you won't want to miss it. <laughs>